Okay, today we're going to focus on uh, finding the area and perimeter of irregular shapes. It's super important to remember that there is no formula for finding area and perimeter of irregular shapes. We must always try and find regular shapes within this. So I suppose our regular shapes, they start off with our square, our rectangle, our triangles, our circles, our trapeziums, our parallelograms, and so on. So super important that we're looking to find these because we do know the formula for finding the area of all of these shapes. So just so we can remember a few of them, we have L squared length by width, triangle is half base by perpendicular height, area of a circle is pi r squared, trapezium is a plus b divided by two times h, that's in your log tables, and then parallelogram is base times perpendicular height. So we're constantly looking to see can we spot any of these in our in our um in our questions. So just in this question here, before we look at, we can spot that we have a small circle here, we have a small circle here, we have um the area of a small circle here. Let me grab that. Okay, so and then we also have the area of this big circle. And we'd be using all of those formulas to try and figure out exactly what and how to find the area of those irregular shapes. Okay, so let's look at an example together. Previous one here, it is, oops, sorry, it is a plus b all over two back there. And we can see we have it here, a plus b all over two times h. Now this is in your log tables. So question one, it says, find part, uh, so a part of a machine is shown, find the total area of the machine. So immediately we're looking at this and we're going to take in some information. So what do I know? I know from here out is five millimeters. We know this area here looks to be one millimeter. This is four millimeters. And from top to bottom here is eight millimeters. So it's good that they're all actually in millimeters here, um, which means we don't have to change any units. Uh, but we have to try and, I suppose, spot what are our regular shapes here. So hopefully you've seen it um, nice and easily. Uh, and you've spotted that if, if I draw my line here, I'm left with a semicircle. So I do know the formula for area of a full circle. It's in my log tables, but also area of a full circle is pi r squared. They're telling me in this question to take pi to be 3.14. And then the other, um, the other shape I can see here is a trapezium. So I'm going to find the area of the trapezium. I'm going to find an area of a circle, but then I'm going to half the area of a circle and I'm going to add them together to get my answer. So area of a trapezium, uh, we have it back in the, in the previous a slide so I'm just going to now I've gone straight to the log tables and I've found uh, the picture of the trapezium and I've found the formula beside it now you should notice that on a trapezium um, there is looks like there's a bit of a triangle you could draw two triangles either side but the reality is there's one length that's much longer and one length that's much shorter so looking here I can see that this uh, is definitely the longer section up here which just means that it's actually turned upside down okay uh, but it won't really matter because it's a plus b so it won't matter if we do this side and then this side or this side of this side so it's uh, the important thing is to get these numbers correct so the first one i'm going to try and correct get correct here is this h which stands for height now when i zoom in on this i can see that the length from the start to finish here is eight millimeters but I actually just want to find this height bit here. Okay, so you can see um, possibly a nice way to put it would be actually from here to here. Okay, that's the height there. Uh, and that's what I need to try and figure out. Now I know from my diagram that the whole thing is eight millimeters, isn't that right? So we've got to try and find out from here to here. Now hopefully you've noticed that up in the semicircle we have a center point going out to the circumference. So any distance that goes from the center point out to the circumference, we would call that a radius. So that here is a radius, but also this here is a radius, as is this a radius and so on. 
So that helps me figure out that from here to here is five millimeters, which then helps me figure out the height of my trapezium should actually be three millimeters if the whole thing is eight. So I have my H, happy days. So I now have area equals, don't know what A plus B is, over two, and then it's all times uh, my H, which in this case is going to be three. Okay, time to find my A and my B. So I have four millimeters here, and I'm going to say that that is my shorter section. So I'm gonna call that A, so four plus. So we want to find out our longer section here, which is B. So let's see if we can do a little bit of digging and figure that out. Okay, so we know that this section here is one millimeter. And likewise over here. Um, and we want to find out this green section here. Now, hopefully you will have noticed that if this is an OR and this is an OR and this is an OR, then from the center point out to the circumference here would both be ORs. Okay, and we know ourselves that if we have a point from the circumference that goes through the center that hits another circumference, we can also call that the diameter. So I do know from here to here has to be five and from here to here has to be five. So I'm just necessarily, I'm just taking off that one millimeter on both sides, which actually gives me four here and four here, which gives me a length at this point of eight. So I now know that that's going to be eight and I can apply my uh, formula. So what have I got here? Four plus eight is going to give me 12 divided by two, which is six, all times three, which is going to give me 18 millimeters squared. So that is my area for my trapezium. Now, sometimes people aren't sure as to what to do first, uh, but see here we have the fraction and then the H is outside. So we work the fraction out first, uh, and then we'll multiply at the end, okay? So 18 millimeters squared gives me that bit there. Now I'm not finished, I still have to find the area of the semicircle. Now, when we are given um, a semicircle, there are two ways we could actually do this. We could find the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, and because we're only dealing with a semicircle part of that, we could actually half it. Um, so we could do pi r squared, and once we get our answer, we could divide it by two to find a semicircle. But I'm gonna show you another way just to keep us, I suppose, always learning different ways. And that's to find the area of a sector. So, and let me look at the diagram. Yeah, that looks right. So this is a sector of a circle and we should know how many degrees would be in this sector. So hopefully you've realized that if a whole circle is 360, then a semicircle has 180 degrees. And that would make sense anywhere for our straight line. Um, so I'm going to find the area of a sector. Now, again, we don't need to learn this off by heart. It's in our log tables. So I'm opening up my log tables now to area and volume section, and I'm finding where it says area of a sector. OK, I have my information here. So area of a sector is pi r squared all multiplied by theta. And remember, theta just stands for the given angle all over 360. So let's apply that. Pi r squared, they're all stuck together. That means we are multiplying. And earlier in the question, it said to take pi as 3.14. So we haven't really forgotten that. So it is 3.14 multiplied by the radius squared. The radius of this circle is given to me here is five millimeters. So five to be squared, all multiplied by the given angle, which in a semicircle is 180 all over 360 and we type that into our calculator just super important to remember that a sector it doesn't necessarily always have to look like this okay it can look like a semicircle or it can look like three quarters of a circle so to just make that connection if you if it's easier for you to do this by all means work away i'm just showing you another way that might come in handy in a while so i've typed it all into my calculator and my answer is 39.25 millimeters squared now let's go back to the question the question was, find the total part of the machine. This lesson is all about spotting that we can find the area of this machine because it's not a regular shape. 
we have to find regular shapes within it. So I drew a line here and I decided that I found a semicircle or a sector of a circle and I found a trapezium. So my final step, step three here, uh, after step one and step two, uh, is to add the two answers together. So I have 39.25 plus 18 and my final answer is 55 point uh, something millimeters squared. Okay. All right. So that is uh, the correct answer there and showing you how you do it. Now we're going to do activity one. I'm going to talk you through activity one um, and how we're going to do this via online. Okay. So here is activity one. Here are the questions. And I'm going to set up a quiz right underneath this now saying activity one quiz where you I'll, I'll say the answer to part one. So I'm going to just rename this question one. It'll be activity one anyway. So part one, two, three, four. We're going to call this part five and this part six. So I should really use my... Okay. So I want you to find the answers for all of these and then input the answers into the quiz. If you've gotten them right, um, then I will see that. Um, I would also like you to turn on the quiz straight away so that I can see how long you've been active on the quiz. So try and turn on the quiz first of all, work this out, then put in that answer, work this out, then put in that answer and so on. So I can just see how long everybody's logged in for. So this is activity one. So we're going to have a quiz on activity one and activity two. And then I suppose seeing how people got on with that, um, I'll be able to know how to move on with the next lesson. Uh, this is Friday's lesson. We obviously have no school Monday or Tuesday, uh, so our next lesson will be up on Wednesday. And I hope everybody is well and, um, you know, not worried about this in any way. We're going to get through this completely fine. We're going to finish the course on time and everything, uh, everyone will be all set for their exams when they happen.